by Frank Kingway and David House, owner Async from Gene Street. Okay, so uh, first thing to mention, um, there's going to be some audience participation. So if anyone's got a laptop or a phone with Wi-Fi, get it out, make sure you've got the connection details. And <laughs> again. Okay, so um, Async is um, Async is a library uh, for doing concurrent programming. Um, if you're familiar with LWT, then you know the sort of science program, uh, but you don't have to be, don't worry. Um, so we believe it to be less error prone for writing concurrent systems than the sort of traditional threading style. Um, so the basic idea is this deferred type. So uh, operations that would block, um, instead, in the async model, uh, they just return immediately and they give you back an empty box. So they, uh, they return immediately, they go away and do their work somewhere else, um, I would say in a different thread, which is a bit of a lie, but, um, and then sometime later they finish and they fill in the box for you. So you get in the thread T, which is an empty box initially, sometimes later will become fulfilled with the actual result. Um, so that's great, so you can run count lines, you know, go you know, block reading on a socket or take a while reading off a disk or something, uh, and in the meantime your program can be running other bits of code. Um, so that's nice, but how do we actually wait for the result or something? Um, so, the third form of monad, so we have a bind, um, we have a bind, um, so what, the way the bind works is it takes a deferred on the left, a function on the right, um, and basically says um, to that deferred, uh, when you become fulfilled, please schedule this function to be run. Um, so, count lines will take a while to run, um, and then the right hand side of the deferred will run when the, uh, uh, when the count lines deferred becomes determined. Um, so you can kind of you get this sort of quite natural looking chaining going on. It looks almost almost like um, this sort of traditional uh, sequential code. In fact, if you if you sort of imagine that kind of some kind of um, syntax extension for say like let bang or something, it's, you, you, could, you could make this look very much like normal OCaml, but at the same time, um, if you get rather than blocking, it can go away and do something else for a while. Um, so. Um, I, I, I phrased what I said before reasonably carefully. Um, so one point to mention is, um, so if you have a block of code that looks like this, so there may be between, between these binds quite a lot of, sort of pure code, like just normal camel code with no more binds in it. Um, the property of async, which is basically the, what we think is the, mo the kind of key point that makes it easy to write async programs, um, which is that between two binds, that block of code is guaranteed to run um, without any interruptions. So you'll never, you'll never the, the binds are your explicit context switch points. Um, and if you just have a block of code with no binds in, you know that that's going to run atomically. Um, so this really, this makes it, it makes it a lot easier to think about. Many fewer things like mutexes are acquired for a bunch of years ago. Um, so I will through that quite quickly. Um, it doesn't matter too much if that was all nonsense because we've got a, a demo. Um, so, can we go over to the, the next slide? Um, let's leave it this side now. So this is, uh, this is our demo. Feel free to log on to this address, replace Fred for your name, and replace a number for any, um, any natural number, any, any non-negative uh, integer. Um, it's a game. The game is uh, you have to try and vote for the lowest number that no one else is going to choose. So if two people vote for the same number, then you're ruled out. Um, so vote for a number and try and, pick, try and pick a number that no one else is going to choose. And at the end, we'll download the list of results and we'll see if you chose the lowest unique, uh, uh, lowest unique natural. Um, you can vote more than once. It, all that will happen is that you'll change your vote. Um, so it will be your place your old vote for your new vote. So that will be running for the rest of the talk uh, and doing all the questions. Uh, so feel free to have a play. Um, and let's actually look at the code that's running this thing. So, OK. Um, so this is most of the server. Um, so I'm going to walk through this code. Um, I'm going to start down the bottom. So this demo is not just um, intended to talk about async's execution model. Async is also, like core, used throughout many, like basically virtually all of our systems, used by dozens, um, maybe up to 100 local developers, and has plenty of, uh, of libraries built on top of it, um, which share the same sort of quality guarantees that you get with core. So the first guy I've mentioned is this TCP module. It makes it really easy just to spin up a TCP server. You just say serve on a port, um, run this function when you get a new connection, 
And you have to think about what happens if that function never raises an exception. Um, so we're calling server twice. So this is a server which is running two, uh, it's, it's sort of two TCP servers in the same process. The first is the web server. The second is a server which will allow us to connect to clients and download the list of folks and display that. So let's start with the web server at the top. Um, there's a bit more code further up. I'll show you that in a second. But the idea is we, uh, we read through the uh, HTTP request. We uh, do some whole string bunging, grab out the, uh, the path, the URL that you've requested. Um, and, uh, and from that, we get your name and your number, uh, maybe. You know, it's an option. So this guy, this get number from request, returns to the first because it takes a while. It might, there might be some time between you know, reading from sockets is blocking. Uh, maybe some time before, um, after the connection is established, before you actually have enough to determine what the vote is. Um, <coughs> pretend that guy up there for the two hours and then the pipe is just a bind. There's a technical reason which is not worth going into. Um, so it runs that and then you sort of block, you sort of wait there and then run the stuff after that. And in the meantime, you could have other instances of this server web function coming. If someone else comes in at the same time, we might hit server web again. If we ran the client, the, 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 um, the other clients, which I'll show you in a sec, we might get into server entries. So these different functions could be sort of lit up at, um, at different points. Um, um, but the key thing to mention is that this entries parameter, which is threaded through and created here, so this is the hash table. Um, it's using course hash table module, which is not re entry at all. It's no, no concern has been taken whatsoever to think about threading in terms of uh, the hash table library, but you just don't have to. There's no logs around it. We do a hash table replace. We don't worry about it. There's no concerns about, you know, you don't have to ever think about, you don't have to think about, in this example, what happens if. Multiple, like, you, you just don't, don't have to consider the various kind of combinations and permutations that your function, like in terms of execution order, that could end up with result. Well. It just works. Um, so, so uh, yeah, let's see the top that way briefly. So this is a this is our HTTP server, which is slightly simpler than the one you saw in Octagon this morning. Uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> so yes, it's uh, it's only its whole, but uh, there we are. Now, there's, there's really nothing, no dark magic going on. You're seeing like the entire uh, the entire server. Um, Sixty lines. Let's let's go back down to. So I'll mention. Let's talk about server entries very briefly. Um, so in a minute, we're going to connect a client to see what votes we have. Um, the client and the server need some kind of protocol to communicate. Um, so async uses um, good use of things in core and the syntax extensions that we use. So this is an example of bin prop, which is what one mentioned for doing some binary, fast binary synchronization. Um, and it really is this, this easy. You just say, like, string table bin by to t. This is some automatically generated function which knows how to serialize hash tables with strings and the keys. You give it as an argument the function for serializing the values. This is a hash table from strings to integers from names to votes. Um, and you just say writer dot write bin prop, give it a function for doing serialization, give it a writer which you can think of as just like a you know like a file script which gets written to, um, and give it a hash table and then can we look at the client code. Um, look at the URL. So yeah, sure. Uh, it's uh, oud dot street dot com. Um, 8080. Okay. So on the client side, there's something very similar. We use to read it up, read in part, give it the same serialization um, values, and it just reads it back. Um, and uh, read it up, read, read in part actually gives you a camel value back. So in two lines of code, you take an entire hash table, serialized it to an efficient binary representation, send it over a wire, and got it back at the other end as an actual open value. Um, <laughs> so yeah, again, another use of the TCP module, you can just sort of say, uh, go connect to this guy, post some port, run this function once you, once you, have, the, uh, once you have the connection. It's extremely simple, it's being quite helpful as well. OK, let's check the other. Uh, yeah, that's that's the rest of the client. So that's all that's all of the code. Um, this again is you know thirty lines of code or something. Should we run the client? Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. Uh, so you'll see dot 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 if there's more than one entry. Uh, it looks like some people might have got the parameters wrong for the uh, or put numbers in as their names as well. Uh, so who wants to own up to one seven eight four two? Because your vote with yeah. 
Let's go see, see how, what's the biggest number out of interest? So this is on the... On, maybe something went wrong. There was a last minute bug fixes going in this morning. I have to go make a mark. Yes. <laughs> um, someone won with number two. Who voted for two? Maybe you've made it. Oh. Someone did. Perhaps not. I mean, no doubt that everyone did. <laughs> I think something, something's wrong. We must. Yeah, oh well. Okay, demo doesn't work. <laughs> um, so, that's just, that was again a very brief sort, very brief kind of. Um, for example, the fact there was no iteration going on, but hopefully you can see some of the benefits that we can get from, uh, from using this relation model of uh, binary account programs. So, um, do you want to try and debug all that dead questions? <laughs> um, okay, so those are the old questions. Mark will fix the code and then we'll play it again. Okay, can you name the, the significant differences for this uh, async to all the um, So. Yes and no. I say like so. I'd say LWT and async are more similar than they are different. Firstly, so the interfaces look quite similar. You can always draw sort of a translation. Like if you use this function LWT, then you should use this like this function async. Um, it's not quite the same. Um, LWT doesn't quite have the same strength of um, uninterruptibility that I that I get that I describe for async. Um, so if you have a deferred, there's a way of sort of filling in a deferred. Um, and in LWT, that might go. In, if you fill in deferred, that might go and sort of run all the handles straight away, um, whereas an async is sort of scheduled and like you are not interrupted, then the scheduler is done later, it goes back to your code, I'll like, just let you carry on, and then the scheduler picks up later. Another significant difference is the handling of exceptions. Um, so uh, LWT sort of has exceptions kind of baked into the monad. Um, async takes a different model where um, we have a sort of a, a kind of execution context for every job. Um, so if you have a <laughs> if, if, if an exception is raised, then it knows sort of to kind of propagate that up to the execution context of where that job ran, um, which it's kind of hard to say precisely, but it's, it, we think at least it's sort of a more principled way of thinking about um, exception flow. Um, for example, in LWT, if you fill in a deferred, it happens to run um, another um, handler which raises an exception, then you, it might propagate back up to you, which is just kind of weird. Like this is some function from a completely different part of the tree. Uh, completely different part of your code path, and you don't have that set, that same problem, I think. Um, but it's, it's to be stressed, like the libraries are broadly quite similar. Um, we think there are some, some advantages that ASIC has, but yeah, the, 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 so using either one will. I, I would say one uh, difference of computer and material is async is much closer to purely in the locale. There's a great deal to see in LWT, and the, in, there's almost none in async, you only see in async is essentially wrappers for system calls. And so in terms of the uh, sort of confidence in the code, it's a lot easier for us to get confident about the correctness of a, a bunch of tricky scheduling code in the code that is in C. It is right. There's no bug. It's right. So there are huge semantic differences. Do you think that's impossible to still to run library and give you some flags or um, it's, I think I'm going to say future work, uh, maybe. Like, so I know that Anil, for example, has written a web server which is kind of functionalized over either using LWT or ASIC over the hood. Um, no. no. <laughs> 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 they, 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 clearly, that's not the way you actually want to write software that has a proof of concept that like, they are similar enough to using the same program. I think that works quite well. Um, yeah, I think the scope for doing something like that. Something like that. I think it's it's not a job in replacement because of these sort of semantic like, differences. I imagine there is code which relies on each one and it's gonna to have to be carefully sorted out. But so I think in terms of who's gonna think about this, uh, Jeremy did you know with actually joined Gene Street and he's starting in November and we are going to have him. He's among other things he's gonna code in QAC and I think he'll be very well positioned to have to think about what he would know. it is one thing that is is true. One lovely thing about uh, LWT is it's inter there's a bunch of really great internal design decisions. We have uh, shamelessly stolen and reorganized async. So it has a very similar internal structure to how LWT does it. It's kind of staged in the same way. And I think there's some chance you could make, uh, have some kind of shared backend. Uh, the one thing is, there is no way that we are going to give up on the semantics of async. So I think that it's because, like, you know, we have a million lines of code running on it and stuff that just 
there's, there's too much active infrastructure. So, so, and so I think to the degree that the cement, if they're going to merge, the cement is basic, I think. If the, or are going to have to be able to make our own research. That there could be new functions that uh, we can transmit that you're not going to be able to use. So, uh, we think of the world because uh, it's such a big one with people of that. Because I think that uh, there could be a way to, to, to add some functions, so I think to, to concept of capability, so you, you, you won't have to use it. Yeah. <coughs> some of the semantics are baked into the lowest level of uh, the scheduler. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you can. You, I think maybe work in progress is actually the best example. Like we'll learn more as, as the PR will probably help us understand a lot as he works on. Yeah, it's not. There's no problem. Yeah, it's no problem. So, log transfer code is correct. Uh, so, the person who had that one, four, seven, whatever number is what yeah. say. So, there was one person yeah. in the back. Uh, two questions. Actually, the numbers were random users. Right. Oh. Somebody wrote a shot. <laughs> okay, to fill that. Uh, my question is about to combine async with. OLX limited continuation library and in a direct style version. Sorry, could you say that again? Is, it, is there a possibility that um, async could be combined with the limited continuation library to create a, a direct style version so you could have the uh, benefits of async while, without having to program in the grammatical style? <coughs> Knowing very little about the limited yeah. continuations library, um, I can't give a full answer to that. I think we have plenty of code, code which is written in the uh, metallic style, and it doesn't really get in the way too much. It's like so. The very nice thing about it is that um, visually, it just makes it very obvious as to the sort of concurrent structure. Like, if you see a bind in the code, then that's the point where you have to kind of stop and think. Um, we actually kind of like metallic style. One idea we've thrown around is having this. Syntax extension where you could say sort of let bang, and then that would implicitly do a bind. And one of the big disadvantages is that we mentioned, you know, the design principle for core is that we like explicitness a lot. And having, you know, this, this, it just feels that there's nothing going on. If you can see the binds and the returns there, you can you can understand exactly what what the kind of the way that the ASIC checker is working. You can see the magnetic style makes it sort of explicit, absolutely explicit what is going on. Um, Probably wasn't a very satisfactory answer. We can talk after it in the break. Okay, let's come to the speaker.